We open the show by asking, as we often have before, why is there a huge disconnect between the people who run the Republican Party and the people who vote Republican? And we pointed to the example of so-called Republican strategist Frank Luntz. And we didn't mean to pick on him personally. He's not the cause of all the Republican Party's problems, but he is a symptom of it. If Frank Luntz is telling your elected officials what they should say in public and the positions they should take, you're in trouble. Here's video that kind of tells that story. In 2016, Frank Luntz explained why he never wanted to be identified as a Republican again. Watch. No one will call me a Republican again because I'm not part of this. I'm not part of that system. I'm not part of that negativity. This is not something I was involved in this year. I will leave it to others to explain and to try to get themselves out of this mess. So the guy who shilled for Purdue Pharma, who actually went out and told people to take OxyContin, is just too embarrassed to be connected to the Republican Party, which he now once again is advising this week. What is going on? Ned Ryan has watched this party for a long time. He's founder and CEO of American Majority. He joins us tonight. Ned, thanks so much for coming. I just want to say for the fifth time, I've always kind of like Frank Luntz. I'm not against him personally. It's not personal in any way, and he's not the whole problem, obviously, but he is That's a right. symbol. So what is this exactly? Yeah, there's a there's a massive disconnect between those that are running the party and the actual voters inside the base inside the party. I mean, this is pretty amazing to watch them try and dismiss Trump as though he didn't even exist when he was a 95 percent approval rating in the Republican Party, but also yeah. dismissing the issues that he ran on. And, and let's not forget immigration, immigration being front and center. And they want to actually memory hold Trump and the issues that he stood for and act like it never happened when, in fact, that's where most of the base is. You don't have 95 percent approval rating inside the base unless what you're promoting and the issues that you're talking about are popular with the base. There's a massive disconnect in which those inside the Republican, leading the Republican Party, view a lot of the voters and a lot of the base as their useful idiots. Just put us back in power, and then we're going to do whatever we want, whatever our corporate and donor class want us to do. You're just the useful idiots that put us back into power. And at some point, the Republican voters have to wake up and say, when we actually vote for members in the House and members in the Senate, we are going to demand leadership that actually reflects our views of the base. And until we do that, we're going to see more of this. Well, yeah, because that's kind of the one thing a political party can't do, which is ignore its own voters. It's not a church. It's a party in a democracy. It exists to represent its voters. It has no other role, right? Or am I missing something? No, that's exactly right. And I think I think the leaders inside the establishment are in for a rude awakening during the 2022 primary season in which a lot of the base is going to get a shot at the 10 Republicans that voted to impeach Trump. Uh, some of these senators that have not actually been America first, they're going to get a shot at them in the primary. But the real question becomes, uh, Tucker, are there going to be enough members in the House and Senate elected to actually enforce new leadership? No more Mitch McConnell, no more Kevin McCarthy. Let's have real America first leadership in the House and the Senate. And then let's get a real America first back in the White House. It, it, it's one of those things where we never fully had all of the leadership at the White House House and sit on the same page. Maybe we could have that in the future. What a nice change that would be. It would be. But the very first thing they have to do is ignore their enemies. If you care what your enemies think. That's right. Again, ignore. we were denounced as white nationals for quoting Martin Luther King. You know, at, at some point you just realize these people aren't serious. Their criticisms are not in good faith. They're trying to control you. And if you let them control you, whose fault is that? It's yours. That's exactly right. Right. Yeah. Ned Ryan, thank you. It's great to see you tonight. Hope you have Thanks, a great Dr. weekend. It's the country. In Texas, Republicans, uh, although they have the upper hand over Democrats there, have sandbagged a transgender sports bill. The Texas Republican legislature is also dragging its feet on passing a bill that would prohibit the chemical castration of minors. And Republicans, uh, excuse me, in North Dakota, following in the, in the footsteps of Republicans Asa Hutchinson and Christy Nome, the Republican governor there, Doug Burgum, has vetoed a transgender sports bill.